question? Uh, no one extra yet, not yet. on everything. Welcome, everyone, to MLK's Black History Month celebration. Welcome, Economic Opportunity Board's Black History Month Health and Wellness Series. We will begin right now. I know it says shortly, but we're going to start right this minute as we introduce to you Ms. Kimberly Mitchell. Ms. Kimberly Mitchell is an educator. Well, we're going to wait till he stops coughing first so we can <laughs> do this properly. <laughs> Ms. Kimberly Mitchell, educator and memory health consultant, brain booster, conducting today's class memory awareness seminar. Ms. Kimberly, yeah. take it away. Hi, thank you, Brian. I'm, I'm honored to be here. Um, my name is Kimberly Mitchell. I am thankful for anyone who has shown up on this late afternoon. I'm going to switch now to my screen to share with you guys so we can start the presentation. First, let me tell you a little bit about myself, just so that you know who you're dealing with. Um, and you can ask any questions throughout the uh, session. But of course, I will um, take moments where I'll ask you to post questions through the chat. My name again is Kimberly Mitchell. I am an educator and a memory health consultant. I have been an educator for the past 19 years, and I've had students ranging from two years old to 92 years old. I teach both individually and in group settings. I've been teaching the elderly community um, for the past seven years, both here in Vegas and in Southern California, primarily in the Burbank area. Uh, Brain Booster is a research and evidence and evidence based company. Um, I began teaching memory care uh, seven years ago, but about 12 years ago, I had a family member that I was very close to that was struggling with her memory, and that is what catapulted me into being so interested in this field. My main resources are NIH, which of course is the National Institutes of Health. I definitely pull a lot of information and have connections at Cedar sinai in their neurology department. The Lou Rebeau Center has been such a blessing since I've lived here for the last two and a half years. Their brain center is a wealth of knowledge. And of course, I definitely delve into the Alzheimer's Foundation as well as Science Daily. I am extremely passionate about helping others always, but I have a true heart for the two extremes, the young and then the elderly. I have a true passion for both extremes. So let's start off talking about why certain things that we need to do on a daily, right? That's the name of the game. We want to look at um, our memory and it is literally the least, the brain is the least taken care of organ intentionally. So we go to the doctor and they check on your kidneys and your heart and check your sugar levels and check your cholesterol and all these other things. But it's probably been rare, if ever, that a doctor has asked you how your brain is doing. How are you treating your brain? And when people find out that I teach memory care, they often say, oh, my memory is awful. And I ask them how often they use it. <laughs> and so sometimes we just want to pretend they're supposed to go a certain way. And they're not, just like we take care of other parts of our body, we have to take care of our memory and our brain. One of the best things you can do is laugh. That seems like a real easy remedy and it's not gonna cover everything. 
But let's let's delve a little bit into why laughter is so important and why you should do it often. So laughter, laughter stimulates all of your organs. All of your organs are relaxed and are stimulated when you laugh. Your brain doesn't know whether something is really funny or not, if you want to know the truth. It's the laughter that relaxes your entire body. It releases the good endorphins to the brain. So the blood flow is better. You can think clearer. It boosts your entire immune system. It definitely lightens stress and helps to reduce anger in any moment. And most importantly, it's contagious. Just like negativity can be contagious, so is positivity and laughter is one of those things. Even if you're laughing and someone doesn't start laughing with you, typically they'll at least start smiling. There's a concept that I have called prime. And primed are the six things that you have to do every single day. You have to figure out how to incorporate them into your daily activity so that you can keep your brain working well. Years ago, we thought that you were born and you spent, you know, from the moment you were born until anywhere from 18 to 22, 23, developing the brain is developing and the cells are developing. And then you, you know, you're in your youth and you're in your 20s and you're smart as a whip. And then by about 35, 40, we had this thought years ago that slowly, little by little, you started losing brain cells. And then eventually that's when you began to forget things and your memory slipped, headed towards the end of your life. Well, Uh, Kimberly, we can't hear you. Thing else that we talked about. If you want to tone your arms, you have to work them out. If you want to tone your brain, you have to work it out. Okay? We have to remember that it is another organ that we are supposed to take care of intentionally. So let's look at what these six things that we should do every day are. And remember, any huge success is typically the result of small successes, just things you do day in and day out. There's no pill. There's no magic potion. You just have to train yourself to take care of your brain. The first thing every single day that you should do is find ways to challenge your brain. Right. You want to have puzzles of some sort. Yes, there are puzzle books that you can buy. And if you do choose to go that route, make sure that you're buying books that are mixed puzzles, not just crossword or not just word searches. Typically, finding a book that lists what you're addressing at the top of the page is really, really good. Really good brain books have a mixed genre of puzzles and at the top of each puzzle it'll tell you what it is you're working on. The reason that's important is because once you get about halfway through a, a puzzle book you can start to see the things that you're weak in and the things that you're strong in and you can of course go back and try to work harder on your weaknesses so that you keep yourself balanced. Languages, if you want to go beyond just having a puzzle book, and before I go into languages, having two puzzle books in the house is really smart. You want to have one near the area that you sit in, near the living room or wherever you tend to watch TV that's outside of the bedroom, and then you want to have one next to your bed. Okay, those are two good areas to keep a puzzle book, and when you find yourself either stressed, can't sleep, all kinds of things. At least we want to do something in those moments of either calming down or trying to get, you know, get ourselves a little more settled to make some decisions. Why not do something that also benefits your brain? So doing those word searches, doing the adult coloring, all of those things are puzzles that challenge your brain because most importantly, they help you to focus for a set period of time and not stress whatever it is that was on your mind. Stress is a killer of neurons in our brain. 
So we want to minimize the stress and we want to have things right at our arm's length that can help us do that. Okay, languages. Languages are often said to be a sign of intelligence. I don't want that to be all the way true because I really only know English fluently, but I am working on a second language. Learning a language is really, really good because you have to delve in and you have to fully be present and you have to put yourself on some kind of a schedule. One of the problems as we get older is that we end up not having a curriculum, so to say. The reason you didn't have to have this list of possible things to do when you were probably anywhere from 30 to late 50s is because your puzzles were the things that at some times you probably wanted to end. Raising the family, working on a job and getting promoted, starting a business or maintaining a business, balancing the checkbook, raising the children. All of those things were your puzzles. And then what happens at retirement is a lot of those things either dwindle back severely or they disappear. The kids move out, they're on their own, you're on a fixed income, so there's not a whole lot of moving and shaking with money that you have to do. And the brain, again, like anything else, is less challenged, which means it's less firm and it's less in shape. So we have to create puzzles. We have to create those positive challenges so our brain keeps working. I truly believe that everyone shouldn't retire. If you don't really know what to do with your time or how to bring in challenging brain activities, you should volunteer somewhere or get a part-time job if it's safe for you. So studying a language, if that's something you want to do, put yourself on a schedule. There's so many apps and it seems a lot of seniors feel like it seems, you know, too overwhelming to get on the Internet and find these apps. Whether you do it on your smartphone or whether you do it through the Internet, I know that I'm always here for my clients to help them get through anything. Um, when it comes to, you know, things on the internet. Um, but there's always usually, I know COVID makes it hard because I'm sure when you went to certain, to the MLK center or other rec centers that there were people that could help you. But you want to go on, there's a few um, language learning apps that are free. After you get to a certain amount of time on those apps, there is a charge. It's usually not expensive, but you can also go old school and just get yourself a book of the language you want to learn. The key is to make yourself serious and say, okay, I do that on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 11 to 12 and stick to it. One of the things that happens in, in retirement and in our older years is we let too much of our life just be happenstance. Okay, I guess I'll do it right now. I, I don't have anything else to do or they canceled my show tonight. Your brain, just like when you were younger, needs to know what to expect. So if you can put yourself on the schedule with learning a language or whatever other kind of brain activity that you choose, that really helps so that your memory and your hippocampus, which we'll talk about, continues to grow. So the hippocampus is two little seahorse-like creatures, little organs in your brain, and they are where you house your memories. You house them first there, and then certain memories go to where you hold long-term memories. But the hippocampus is what you want to keep strengthening, and the only way you do that is by activity, is by challenging activity for the brain. The hippocampus can grow at any time in your life unless you have a direct injury to it. So this, the way we try to slim up and make sure we're in shape in other parts of our body, you really want to have a big, fat hippocampus. You want to keep working on it until you really, really feel like you're every day you're contributing to your brain health. You see the woman here on the side of the screen, too. I will tell you, I have a few seniors that I'm very proud of because they find classes to take online. They take them from the comfort of their home. It can be something that you never thought you would study. Again, the key is to show up, be on time. If a test is approaching, study for the test. Make sure you're practicing at set times during the week. 
I don't know how many people are interested, but for the first time ever, Harvard University is offering 10 of their classes absolutely free. I think that's great. You can go on their website and you can look at the free classes they're taking. Their justice class is the one I'm interested in. I don't know if I have time to do it. It's self-regulated, uh, meaning you can take it at whatever times are good for you. That justice class, I believe, is a 12-week program, but they say it is the most popular class on their campus. Okay, so finding things like that, learning to play an instrument, is an incredibly good brain health activity because it takes time and it takes attention. One of my favorite stories is about a senior who just wanted to learn to play the harmonica. He was awful, but he stayed at it for nine months straight. He looked on YouTube, he got different kinds of classes from there. And then he began to gather people in the courtyard where he lived because they loved how well he played. All these puzzles are, whether it's making Christmas cards for family members well in advance that you want to hand make, whether it's crocheting or knitting, your brain would like you to find a new activity so that you can ramp it up and so that you can increase your memory and your, your brain health overall. Let's look at what R stands for in Prime. The R stands for rest. I hope everyone is listening loud and clear. I don't want to scare you, but I want to be very honest. Sleep deprivation is directly linked to Alzheimer's and dementias. Sleep deprivation is directly linked to Alzheimer's and dementias. We want to get quality sleep, which means it is uninterrupted. It's very hard for many reasons, like using the bathroom or ruminating in certain thoughts, not having a comfortable mattress, right? It's too hot or too cold. So you really have to know what happens when you go to sleep. When you sleep at night, pretend that everything you learn during the day in your head is your office and you learn this new word and you learn something new about a family member and you heard something on the news you had never known and imagine all this stuff just is written on pieces of paper and thrown in your in your office well when you sleep at night a detox happens and during that detox you have to imagine there's the best assistant you could ever have up in your brain and they want to take everything you learned and they want to put it in your mental file cabinet in the correct place so that when you go to ask that question or need to pull up that information, it's where it's supposed to be. And you can just pull it out and match it up with other information and think clearly. When you don't sleep well at night, you end up with a messy office in the morning because the assistant never got to do what she needed to do or he needed to do. The detox that takes place in your mind gives your body a chance to do what it does without you interfering. Why do you think that so many medicines make you drowsy when you're sick? because you're going to interrupt what I can do on my own. The human body is so incredible. So rest is very, very important and it needs to be uninterrupted rest. Sleep is the, the most utilized remedy you'll get for anything you go to the doctor for. Break a leg, heartbroken to a therapist, to a, a physical doctor, heart problems. The first thing the doctor is going to say, is go home and get some rest. We underestimate the power of our body. We underestimate what it does when we shut down, we get still, and we let it work. The goal is to have a minimum of four uninterrupted hours of sleep a night and then work towards more. That's your baseline. A minimum, just to get that office a little bit tidy, you need a minimum. That's why when you haven't had proper rest and you're sleep deprived, you can't make decisions, you're emotional. There's so many things that go on because you haven't given your body a chance to detox. 
If you get up through the night to use the bathroom, there could be several reasons. One could be your medication for something else, right? It can sometimes cause you to have to use the bathroom. So you have to be your own advocate. Excuse me, if you're if you're taking these medications and your sleep is not interrupted, <coughs> leave it the way it is. But if it is your medication or you think that's the culprit, make sure that you talk to your doctor as an advocate and you can say it in a very nice way, but you don't want to be fixing your kidneys and damaging your brain. You want to find a way to either change the, the time you take it or change the dosage amount. Talk to your doctor and tell them you're not getting enough sleep and you think it's the, the medication and how can you, you work it so that you're getting what you need in both areas. If you, if you get up through the night um, to, because of using the bathroom because of water intake, I know I'm always telling the elderly people in my family to drink water, drink water, drink water. So I hope everyone knows that the way that you find out how much water you need a day is you take your body weight. This is all personal information. You take your body weight and you divide it by two. That's the number of ounces of water you need in a day. The key is to get your required amount by about 4 p.m. That doesn't mean you can't drink after that, but you should just be sipping for satisfaction of taste buds, not to complete your water intake for the day. That allows you to not get up so much because between the time you stop drinking around 4, 4.30, gulping down large amounts of water, and the time you go to sleep, you've given your bladder a few, few chances, to, a few rounds to, um, to empty. Okay, so you want to watch it. You also want to watch caffeine. If you're not a good sleeper, you want to not have any caffeine either after 3 p.m. or after the beginning of lunch. Okay, you caffeine will keep you up and keep you wired. So you want to make sure that you're taking certain steps. Don't fall asleep with the TV on. People do that all the time. Most TVs have a sleep timer. And the reason is not because I get that you enjoy falling asleep with it on. But if you're awakened through the night and that blue screen is there, it'll wake you up more than you need to to be able to fall back to sleep easily. Try things like putting soft music next to the bed. It's great to do on the phone. You can put meditation music or your favorite artists, or if you like jazz music with no words. And make sure you have a dim nightlight that's safe for you to get up and walk to the bathroom, but not so bright. You don't want to turn the big light on when you get up to go to the bathroom unless it's the only way you can stay safe, because that too will, it will interrupt your sleep in a way that'll make it hard to go back to bed properly, okay? The I in primed stands for interaction, meaning stay social. We have to do it safely, but you have to know that if you begin to isolate yourself, that's just as serious as having a fever or not feeling well in other ways. Your heart is palpitating. Interaction is a healthy part of getting older. Now, if you were someone who was extremely non-social younger, then it doesn't, it doesn't cause alarm as much. But you do want to make sure that you're social and you're interactive, and that does not mean you have to be the social butterfly. Your brain, the way your brain reacts to interaction, you can go to an environment and never say a word, and your brain notices what's new. It notices the smells. It notices anything you see. It's hearing information that it may have only heard for the first time. So staying interactive doesn't mean you have to be a social butterfly. It just means that you need to put yourself in some environments where your brain is still functioning and learning new things. Some healthy ways to interact. I love anyone who is willing to take a walk with a friend if it's safe for you. Put your mask on, double mask if you please, and take a healthy walk. 
it doesn't have to be a big deal. If it's cold out, you can walk right in your building or right around your building. If you live in an apartment, if you have a house, you can walk the perimeter of your house, noticing things you probably never even noticed before. One of my other favorite senior social ways to interact, if you still drive, you got to do an old police car drive, meet a friend in a parking lot in the back of the parking lot and pull at each other's windows. And you have the choice to stay in and keep your windows up and call each other on the phone, but you're right there together for a minute. I had a friend, unfortunately, who lost her sister while she, they were both elderly. Her sister passed away and she was COVID positive and she wanted to go and see her sister's husband. So the husband and her met in the car, they brought something to eat, it was in Philadelphia, they brought something to eat and they actually stayed parked next to each other for over two hours, talking and laughing, making sure each other were okay. So there's some creative ways that you can still stay, stay social and stay safe through COVID. These online classes, there are so many. Don't ever let the, the, the fear of connecting through the internet be a reason that you don't join some of these classes. Ask a neighbor, ask a, a family member, ask someone at a rec if they're there for you. Find out how you can get onto these classes because there are so many classes right now, especially for the senior community. Okay, just stay interactive, engage in some conversations. I hope all of you have a way to either FaceTime or get online through Facebook and see some family members or friends every now and then. That's also important in terms of interaction. Talking on the phone is great, but because of COVID and some of you are socially, um, you know, have to stay socially distanced um, a little more seriously because of health issues, make sure that you schedule it. One of my favorite things that I've done throughout the entire COVID is to cook once a month with one of my girlfriends in, in uh, New York. And what we do is we get our laptops and we put them in the kitchen and we get on Zoom and we start, we've already picked our meal that we're going to cook. So we've already been grocery shopping and we stay on there for two, sometimes two and a half hours. We cook the whole meal together. We talk about all kinds of stuff throughout while it's finishing up. We, we stay on the phone and then we eat together. It's a full day in terms of it's a full date in terms of a girlfriend's date or whether it's romantic or whether it's with a few family members. There are really, really good ways to stay interactive. So now we've done the P, the R, and the I. Primed is our six things we need to do every single day to keep the brain working well. Meditation. This is one that most people frown up about. The reason meditation is so important is because from the moment you are born until you leave this earth, everything is mind over matter, everything. Whenever you're stressed, which we all get, the matter is on top of our mind. That's why we're stressed. Meditation is not about putting on certain clothes and chanting and giving up all your possessions. None of those things have to happen. Meditation is a cleansing of negative thoughts. Meditation is a break from thinking too much. Again, every single thing we do is mind over matter. So once or twice a day, preferably in the beginning of your day, you want to cleanse your mind. You want to sit with yourself in a quiet space. Anywhere from three to five minutes is a good start if you don't meditate. Take nice, full, deep breaths. Try to pick one thing, a word, a color. It can be a scripture, a short scripture. It can be religious, spiritual, or none of those things. You just want something that you focus on. Your mind is going to drift. And then you say, let me get back to what I was thinking of. 
I have meditated for years and I make it a daily practice. Sometimes I am in the middle of, you know, three to four minutes of, me of meditating and I'm quiet and I feel peaceful. My shoulders are rested. And then it'll say, did you take out the, the salmon for dinner? And I have to just sort of say, let me get back to the fact that today's word was talented writer. I'm a talented writer and I'm going to focus on that. So meditation is just about finding a centering thought of whatever you choose, whatever you choose. If you're going through a health issue, your centering thought can be, I am healthy. Meditation is about not straying from a committed time. If I said I'm gonna meditate for five minutes, no matter how crazy my thoughts are, I'm gonna sit for those full five minutes and not exit the commitment. And every time I get a little strayed, I'm gonna go back to I am healthy. If you remember the movie, What's Love Got to Do With It, where Tina, if Tina Turner can turn over all that mess that I did to her, right? And she's forgiven him. And she did it through practicing Buddhism. She became a master chanter and a master meditator. So when you see that level of meditation and you see people chanting and they start to talk fast, typically it's because nothing can get in your head when you say a chant over and over like that. So even if it's not Buddhism or a certain mantra and I'm sticking to I am healthy, if my thoughts are really hard to control, I can just repeat, I am healthy, 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 I am healthy. For as much as I want, nothing else can fit in when you do it that way. If we work together, I'll teach meditation. Uh, what I do is I'll teach different aspects of crime, but meditation is important because again, it's about learning the proper way to breathe, to give yourself some cleansing in your mind and learning that you deserve to take a break from all the stresses that ruminate and float around in our heads in the course of a day. Let's look at the E. Our E is for exercise. Every single day, no birthdays off, no Christmas off, no Hanukkah, no Kwanzaa, none of that. Every day for 30 minutes or more, you should dedicate yourself to moving some part of your body intentionally. This does not mean you have to go and run five miles a day. This means that every day, whether you choose to say, I'm going to work on my wrist today and I'm going to be focused and I'm going to do some wrist turns and I'm going to do enough that I feel a difference and then I'm going to work on my arms. 30 minutes is not a lot of time. You have to do it every day because we know when you don't use it, you what? You lose it. And when you take off a day, it turns into a week, it turns into a month. So typically, if you can just use 30 minutes a day without fail, even if you're sick, my seniors think I'm crazy and I'll tell them, even if you're in bed sick, you can lay there and rotate your ankles, move something on your body every single day. Getting up and walking to the kitchen or the stove doesn't count. <laughs> you can break that 30 minutes up into two 15 minute intervals, but you really want to do them as close together as you can. If you have a dog, one of the beautiful things that one of my seniors does is walks her dog twice a day. And she says she usually does anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the weather but she mixes her meditation with her exercise. So she said, I don't open my mouth when I'm walking my dog. If I see a neighbor or someone, I'll give them a little grin, but she likes to meditate on nature. So while she's walking her dog, she said, it's amazing 
I've lived in this neighborhood for years. And every time I do my meditation and walk, I find something different because nature is always changing. So you can find ways to enter to intertwine these six things every day. I have another client that lives alone. Hers is amazing. She said, I live alone, so I wash the dishes every night, once a day. I wash the dishes between 6 and 6.30. She started turning off her TV, putting her phone in her room on mute. And when she washes the dishes, she said, for about 10 minutes a day, she meditates. And she said, the sound of the water, whether it's running or she's in the bowl washing the dishes, really relaxes her. She finds a focus word and she stays right there for 10 minutes or so and it's done. So there's ways to intertwine these six things, but all six of them should be done. The last one is diet. Everything you eat feeds your brain. And when you think of it that way, it can start to make you say, let me sort of pump the brakes on some of the things that I just go crazy over that I know I shouldn't be eating. Sugar is the main thing I would love to see. I really wish it would become illegal. Mm -hmm. I really do. I wish that you, I really wish that you would have to go somewhere and sneak and find somebody that can slip you some sugar. Sugar feeds all diseases. It feeds all diseases. So remember every time you put something in your, in your mouth, you're feeding your brain. That doesn't mean that you won't have your moments. My mantra is if I eat right most of the time, I don't feel bad when I mess up some of the time. <laughs> so just remember, I had someone say to me, every time you sit down to a meal, look at the food, oh, it smells so good and look at it. And ask yourself two questions. How is it going to make me look? And how is it going to make me feel? Then go for it. Those are very important questions because everything we eat is directly correlated with our brain power. We know, I know that diet is a hard one for me to talk about because people have different health concerns. If you're on a blood thinner, I can't preach to you about eating as much green leafy foods as possible because I was told that's not really smart for people on blood thinners. But I will say, follow your doctor's orders. Reduce as much sugar as you can. There is something called red dye number 40 that's in a lot of foods stay away from it. It's not good for us. Once you really learn to take care of your body through your diet, your taste buds change. So the food will still be really good. I cook really, really well, but I made myself because before COVID, I'm an East Coast girl. I don't know if it's the rule over here, but on the East Coast, one of the most um, the, the most compliments you can give to someone is to invite them into your home and into your kitchen and cook for them. So when I first moved to Vegas before COVID, I was sticking to my, my ways. And every Saturday, I had someone over, either for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I had someone over. But I also attach that I don't want anyone to leave my house and be five pounds heavier. So I began to cook years ago, very, very tasty food, but food that's good for, for me and the people that I'm feeding. So these six things stand for prime. Puzzles, rest, interaction, meditation, exercise, and diet. They should be done every day and it should get to the point where there's a little Miss Kim sitting on your shoulder every night and it should take you about 30 seconds to say, did I do all six things in prime today? If you didn't, don't get up and do them. Just pay more attention tomorrow. I guarantee you that when you make these a part of your life, you will start to see better things happening in your brain. The days of thinking that once you lose brain cells is over, those are gone. 
All you have to do is keep working on your brain activity and you will see differences. You will see differences. I forgot that I had a joke for you guys back when we did the laughter. So maybe some people got on late so I can tell my joke now and see if you guys find it funny. All right, a mom suspects her son of sleeping with his roommate. What she does next is perfect. A mom visits her son for dinner who lives with a girl as a roommate. During the meal, his mother couldn't help but notice how pretty the girl was. She had long been suspicious of a relationship between the two, and this evening only made her more curious. Over the course of the evening, while watching the two interact, she started to wonder if there was more between them than he had admitted. Reading his mom's thoughts, when the girl left the room, her son volunteered. Listen, I know what you must be thinking, but I assure you, we are just roommates. About a week later, his roommate came to him and she said, you know, ever since your mother came to dinner, I've been unable to find my silver plate that was in the buffet. You don't suppose she took it, do you? He said, well, I doubt it, but I'll email her just to be sure. He sat down and he wrote, dear mom, after your visit, a silver plate from the buffet here has been missing. Now, I'm not saying you did take it, but I'm not saying you didn't. But the fact still remains, it has been missing ever since you were here for dinner. Love, your son. Several days later, he received a return email from his mother, which read, Dear son, I'm not saying that you sleep with your roommate, and I'm not saying that you don't sleep with her. But the fact remains that if she was sleeping in her own bed, she would have found the silver plate by now because I put it under her pillow. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> so she got him. <laughs> or she sleeps on the couch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. I want to, right. I want to go back to the screen. Um, I'm going to come back over and see if we have uh participants how many participants are we looking at here we are looking at looks like six six participants oh, i want to stop and see if they have any questions if anyone wants to send a chat in to see if you have any questions no we have a couple of statements i don't know if you can see this oh no. yes never knew how to determine the amount of water an individual should drink daily Thank you for that. Yes, take your body weight, divide it by two. That's the number of ounces. If you want to go a step further, if you drink bottled water, for me, I drink more than what I need to. And I always sit, sit six bottles of water on the counter in the morning. They need to be gone. They need to be gone. So whether I grab two on my way out, whether I drink one, I try to drink a water before I even leave the bedroom, before like I brush my teeth, all those good things in the morning. I try to have one bottle done before I even come out to start eating and doing other stuff. Okay. Is there anyone else who has any questions before we go any further? We're going to play a few games. We're going to play a few games and see how those brains are working. No one else? No other questions. Nothing is popping up. Okay. Out. Feel free to text them continuously if there's any questions, and then I'll get back with you if we don't get to it during the session. Okay. All right. Let's play some games and see how you all do. Our first game is called Where's the Suburbs? This gives you a chance to see some of the games you can play. They can be fun. You do not have to, to, to um, do these games in one setting, okay? But there are healthy ways in between all the other stuff, healthy ways for you to increase your, your neurons and your brain power. So if you have a piece of paper at home, you can write down the answers as we go along. Um, I'm going to give you some time. So, for example, the first one says... Give it, well, the instructions are given the names of three suburbs. Can you identify their closest major U.S. city? 
So number one is Yonkers, Hoboken, and New Rochelle. Who knows the closest major U.S. city? Brian, you know that one? I have no New York City. New York City. I think that was Ramon. That was Ramon. He just jumped on in there and used his brain power. That's why he's here. <laughs> New York City. So you want to go? Let's do number two. It's Hillelia, Homestead, and Coral Gables. What's the closest city to those three? Uh, Miami. Uh, Miami. Miami? Yeah. We know Coral Gables is the most common there that's in Florida. So a good, healthy guess would be Miami, and you are right. Ding, ding. So take some time. I'm going to give you a few minutes to work on three through 11 and write them down and then we'll go over the answers. Try to challenge yourself. I need to say when it comes to puzzles, when it comes to learning languages, any of those things, the ego wants to get it right. The brain in order to grow neurons and increase your hippocampus, the brain only needs you to try. When you try, you do the same work. You could look at this whole thing and never get one answer. But if you really tried, you did your brain work. So go for it. Neither. Are you finding them, Brian? I found one. <laughs> That's good. You're trying, though. Um, I could probably just sum all this up, just say they're on Earth. <laughs> that is not the closest <laughs> major city. Because <laughs> of where you're from. Alien. <laughs> <laughs> They're a bit challenging at times, but we want that. We want to make sure that we challenge ourselves. I'll give you about two more minutes and then we'll go over them. Think it was a week? <laughs> okay. hmm. Without cheating, I think I'm done. <laughs> Yeah. Other without you. Okay. Well, again, all the brain cares about is how hard you try. Our ego wants to get the answers, which is human, but it really is just about how hard you try. Let's look at number three, which is Torrance, Redondo Beach, and Pasadena. Like Los Brian, Angeles. If anybody, um, if anybody texts in their answers, let me know. Sure, I'll let you know tomorrow. Uh, Los Angeles. Yes, number three is Los Angeles. That's the major city. I better number know that four. one. Huh? I better know that one. Number four, Newton, Quincy, and Brookline. That's number which one? Four? Yeah. Number four. Was that? Huh? You have it, uh, Ramon? No, no, no we, we're, that one is Boston. Oh, Boston. Boston. Boston, yes. And okay. so even when you hear the surprise in that, you just learn something new. That's nothing wrong with that. Number five, Dale City, Sausalito, and Mill Valley. San Francisco. San Francisco. San Francisco. I knew wrong. that from Sausalito. No, that was the only one. I... Yep. Number six, Bethesda. 
Arlington and Alexandria. Virginia is not a city, huh? Is DC not a city, is it? You guys better leave my hometown alone. Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. He said D.C. Say it louder, sir. Washington, D.C. I thought he said it's not a city. No, I'm in first. <laughs> I know. Poor D.C. Taxation without representation. Washington, Just shame. Washington, D.C. Washington, Washington is a city and D.C. is the district or the state. Of Columbia. Yep. <laughs> Number seven, Cicero, Skokie, and Elgin. Detroit. Where'd you say? Detroit. Say it loud. Not Detroit. No. Not far, though. I have no idea. Chicago. 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 Yeah. Chicago? Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Ah, okay. Yep. Yeah. I need to open Number up. Number eight, on. Slidell, Gulfport, and Bay St. Louis. Ah. New Orleans. New Orleans. New, say it right, New Orleans, uh, right? New yeah. Orleans. New Orleans, <laughs> right. New Orleans is number eight. Number no. nine, Katy, Sugar Land, and Galveston. Houston. Houston, yeah. It is Houston. Ding, ding, Brian. Houston. Oh, you know he's getting all my ding, ding. <laughs> huh? He's getting all my ding, ding. No, no. Nobody told you to say it out loud. I already knew it this time. Number number ten. I'm gonna get y'all both on the next one. Number ten, Golden, Aurora, and Boulder. Denver. Denver. Ooh, I love it. And I hear a female voice. That's right. Denver. Okay. Number eleven is Camden, Bryn Mawr, and Bluebell. Hmm. Atlantic City. No. I can get because Camden is in New Jersey, but Bryn Mawr and Bluebell make it different. Oh, okay. That's all Not I far. What would you say would be next? Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's all you got. That's all you get. Philadelphia. Oh, Philadelphia. Okay. That would have been my next thought if I'd have thought it. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's funny is when you're when you're doing these games, it's so good because you can have fun, but you are learning new things and you are using different parts and building different pathways of, in your neuronal structure because you are pulling on the little bit that you may know about something that you don't think you know. That's true. So that's the name of the game with increasing brain and memory health. And Brian Let's go to the ding ding. This one is my favorite. These are my favorites. These are called Rebus puzzles or word wings. All right. You're trying to find out what they're saying in each box. Toothpaste. Every box is something different. Toothpaste. Toothpaste. Stop it. Number one is toothpaste. <laughs> so let's don't yell it out. Let the, We're going to go across. So the one next so to don't that. Don't yell it out, out Ramon. People a chance. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone think they know the one next to toothpaste? Three nuts, uh, donuts. Uh, Ooh, yeah. Uh, do not. No. <laughs> how is it presented, Brian? You said peanuts, which is right. In but a, how is it? In, in they're all presented in frames. Uh, peanut gallery. Peanut gallery. Okay. That's where he belongs. I was getting there. I was getting there. Yeah. I've been there tomorrow and the next day. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> now we're on the second row, the first one. This one's some of them we want to write into the publisher. I haven't I didn't make these, but this one, it's a little bit of a stretch, but I get it. It's what do you see there? Ruler cans. You see what? Ruler cans. <laughs> ruler can. I love that he said ruler can. We see a ruler and we see cans. What kind of cans do you think they might be? Soda. Soda cans, looks like. Yeah. The ruler is just there to put in perspective the size of them. Does that help? Does that help anybody? Minnesota. Minnesotas. Okay. Oh. Minnesotas, so okay. Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, Minnesota. I would have gone with short, right. small. If you can get the one next to that, everyone. We're on uh, the one with the cow here. Cubby. Cubby. 
I know that's a cow. That's a. Uh, looks like a rabbit. N Y. Let's see. Cubby bubble. Cubby bump. <laughs> Ramon, you have anything? Cowabunga. <laughs> oh, cowabunga. That's it. Cowabunga. Wow. Hey. You are smart. He stumbled than... right on it. Cowabunga. Yeah. I love the next one. The third row, I love that first one. Duct tape. Duct tape. Ding, ding. Duct tape. What about next to that one? Pinwheel. What it? Yep, yeah, pinwheel. Pinwheel. Very good. Pinwheel. We're on the fourth one down. The first one is classic. I love it. Walking. Walking. <laughs> no, I get how you could say that. What were you going to say, Ramon? Kingdom. Nope. You want? You guys are really not not getting it. <laughs> Dragon Queen. <laughs> Dragon King. It's Drag Queen. Drag Queen, okay. <laughs> I love it. It's okay. Drag Queen. Their makeup is horrible. Yeah, pretty much. It looks like a king's crown. <laughs> Drag Queen. Drag what queen. about next to that one? Overpants. What do you see? One pan on top of the other pants. Overpants. Okay. Uh, underpants. You see Could be underpants. Okay. You see two pants, right? Uh-huh. Could be underpants. Um, no, there's one for that. No, this one isn't. What's another way to say two? Dose. Bye. Bye Keep pants. Going. Bye pants. Bye bye. Pair of pants. Pair of pants. Uh, Pair of oh, pants. You're tricky. Uh, you're tricky. Yeah. Yeah, they're tricky. These really make you think. They're called rebus puzzles, and they're really wonderful because you can sit them next to the bed or next in the in the living room, and you may look at one and not get it, and then look at another and get it, and then you come back to it. But these are all things that have to become defaults in your home or wherever you are that help you to keep your brain on point. We're on the last row, the first one. Hmm. What is that? Equinox. <laughs> what is it? It's, um, they didn't do a good job of it, but it's it's a piece of mail. Yeah, I saw the I see the letter. Uh, double postage on uh, uh, some postage, something wrong with postage. No blackmail. Oh, blackmail. Ah, uh, speaking of two hours. Okay, that's not right. <laughs> I'm insulted. Blackmail. I'm insulted. And what about the one next to that? The last one that we see. Roman plus Roman. Roman uh, plus Roman equals a black heart. Black see through heart. No. Um, well, we know the plus sign can be uh, also said as the sum, right? Hmm. Summer love. Okay. Summer. Well, they should have put some an equal are, sign in yeah, R. Some are, some are love. If, that one was a big stretch. Yeah, if they'd had an equal sign in front of the R, then I probably would have said that. Yeah, yeah. summer love. It's over another big stretch. So like, these are just examples. Yes, these are just examples. Yes. I want everyone on the call to remember how important it is to stay primed every day. Every single day you should stay primed. I don't want you to think you can just wake up some morning and, you know, all of your brain is either good or not good. It's something that just like everything else in our body, we have to work on. Have to we have to work on it diligently. Okay, so tomorrow I should have pain in the side because I was using something I don't use often? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Don't let that soreness come back. I want you okay. to keep on you. <laughs> <laughs> I have truly enjoyed myself. I hope that um, I get to see some faces again. I would love to, uh, to continue this conversation. If there's any questions, please let Ramon or Brian know, and I will get back to you in a timely manner. I definitely appreciate your time, and more than anything, I appreciate your mind. All right. Thank you. We appreciate right? you, too. Okay, Thank Kimberly. you so much. You have a great night.
You and too. We'll see bye, you again guys. Soon. bye, bye, guys. Thank you, Miss Kimberly. I learned something and have food to thought there to you make go. it for the next sixty years. I love it. I love it. Good for you, Ramon. I know how to exercise my brain now. Good. I know how to exercise my brain now. There it is. Exercise your brain all day. All right. All righty. Take care now. Getting proper rest. All right. Definitely. Talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay. You too. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.